when can you say, hey, you got a chance for a living legend to be on your campus and your grounds? And uh, I'm from Kentucky, so don't hold that against me, but you guys that are from here in Georgia and obviously uh, throughout the sporting world, uh, it's not every day you get to have probably one of the best running backs uh, that ever played the, the game of football. And uh, more importantly, though, being from Wrightsville and what I'm excited to, to hear his story today and one thing that he's been preaching since, we, since he's got here, it doesn't matter where you start. All right, it's where you end up. And, um, you know, that's kind of with our thing that we say here at Georgia Military College, start here, go anywhere. And uh, don't let uh, your uh, stance in life uh, dictate what you do with it. And I think, obviously, uh, Mr. Walker being here today, he's a prime example of what you can do with hard work, persistence. Uh, don't listen to the naysayers. And um, you can be what you want to be. Uh, so well, we're definitely excited. Uh, goes uh, hand in hand with our leadership development series and I uh, can't wait to hear uh, what Mr. Walker has to say to us and uh, hopefully if we can take a little bit back with us to our classrooms or at home uh, I'm sure we'll all be better for it so uh, without further ado uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Horsher Walker please. Hey, thank you coach. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You know, I'm going to tell a coach that just said Herschel because Mr. Walker is old. That's my father. So he just said Herschel. And before any speech I ever make, I always acknowledge my Lord Jesus Christ because he said if you don't acknowledge him, he's not going to acknowledge you. And when I come knocking, I want him to let me in. And, you know, and it, it's funny because I also want to acknowledge my wife, Julie, who's uh, in with me because when you're married, you're not two anymore. You're really one. And now, guys, I got, a, I got a team with me. It's called Team uh, Herschel that's with me. I got to acknowledge them, too, because it's weird. My life has changed. My life has changed so much. But I want to just tell you a little story, because everyone look at me, all the glory of Herschel, but they don't know the story of Herschel. And I'm going to tell you all the story of Herschel, because all you're going to think of me as football player. But let me tell you a story. My mom told me I was big bone, which meant I was fat. And I used to have a stuttering problem where I used to stutter so, so bad that I couldn't put a sentence together. So for four years of my life, I never went out for a recess. Four years of my life, I never spoke in a classroom. Kids didn't even think I could speak. I used to sit in the, in the corner of this chair, afraid of everything, wouldn't even speak. But I still remember the last day of school in the eighth grade, I decided to go out for recess, and there was a kid by the name of Anthony Logan. He jumped on me and he beat me up. I still can remember his name because I'd be Facebooking him, tweeting him, trying to find him today and stuff. But not, no, not to do anything, not to do anything, but I want to find him to thank him because he didn't just beat me up, he woke me up. Because that's the day of my life I quit feeling sorry for myself. And that's what I'm going to tell you today is, guys, in life, everything ain't going to always go your way. In life, you got to get up. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have some tough times. But you got to know how to get up off the ground. You got to know how to get up because, guys, I've been knocked down many times. I've been knocked down many times. I've failed many times because this kid beat me up. You know, I grew up in Wrightsville, Georgia. That's not too far from here. So I started doing push-ups. I didn't just do 100, 200. I started doing 5,000 push-ups every day, 5,000 sit-ups every day. My parents had a tree in the backyard with a limb about 10 feet off the ground. I climbed that tree and started doing chin-ups on this tree limb. I started going to the library, getting a book, reading to myself over and over and over. My speech got a little bit better. And instead of walking around with my head down, afraid of everything, I started to walk around with my head up. So four years of my life, I never spoke in a classroom. Four years of my life, I never went out for a recess. Two months in my life, I started working out quick, feeling sorry for myself and knowing about the Lord Jesus Christ. I go back to school, I'm able to speak. I go back to school, I'm one of the top students in my class. I go back to school, I'm one of the best athletes in the state of Georgia. Two months, because I decided to work, quit feeling sorry. And all of a sudden, I started getting scholarships to go to college, not just in the athletic world, I started getting academic scholarships to go to college. But I'm gonna tell you a secret, I didn't really want to go to college. I wanted to be a Marine. I wanted to go to the military. Military, let me tell you this here. 
The military are all true heroes in this country. I'm going to tell you this right now. Our United States military are the reason we're the greatest country in the world. They, they, that was some bad boys. Oh, that's the greatest team you can ever be a part of is the United States military. So that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a Marine. But I couldn't tell my mom and dad, you know, mom, dad, I want to go to the military. So I decided I was going to wait them out. Because, you know, signing day is in February. I was going to wait them out. So I waited. February came and went. I ain't said nothing. March came and went. I ain't say nothing. Easter Sunday, my mom came to me. And she said, Bo, because my nickname is Bo. And y'all mentioned, when I mentioned Bo, everybody think of Bo Jackson. But I'm going to tell y'all another secret. Bo Jackson would never be a Herschel Walker in anything. <laughs> and I'm just going to jump to something. Because Bo Jackson went to Auburn. I went to Georgia. So we competed against each other. And I remember him being in a race with me, too. And he'll tell you this, too. He don't like to tell nobody, but I'm going to tell you. He was in this race with me. And I remember saying hello to Bo at the beginning of the race. It's a 100-yard dash. I said, hello, Bo. How you doing? He said hello to me. I said, how, how is everything going? How you like Auburn? He said, I like Auburn. It's a good place. He said, how you like Georgia? I said, we're, we're, we're doing all right. We got down in the blocks. I still remember this. They shot the gun. I ain't see him no more. <laughs> he saw me. I ain't see him. But, and that has happened three times. I know that happened. But anyway, my, name, my mom said, Bo, don't you think it's time to decide where you want to go to school at? Before I can tell her something, she said, but let me tell you this. If your mind and your heart is pure to the Lord Jesus, no matter what decision you make, God will make it right for you. I said, all right, then. I'll flip a coin. Guys, I flipped the coin to decide whether to go to the military or go to college. It came for me to go to college, and I go, crap. <laughs> now I'm mad that God ain't going to let me do what I want to do, so I decided I am not going to the University of Georgia. Because everyone in my hometown wanted me to go to Georgia. My family wanted me to go to Georgia. So I'm a teenager, now I'm mad that I'm not going to the University of Georgia. So I flipped the coin between Clemson and Georgia. First flip, Georgia wins. Next flip, USC, Clemson wins. I said, wait, 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 best out of five. Jordan won the next two times. <laughs> then I said, wait, mom, dad, I like to go to USC. I like to go to USC out in California. First flip, Georgia wins. Next flip, USC wins. Next two times, Georgia. I said, wait a minute. This is the honest truth. I don't pull the names out of a bag. I pulled Georgia all three times. I said, all right, then I'm going to Georgia. I'm going to Georgia. And I didn't even mean it then. I went outside to play with my younger brother. My parents and everybody called up Coach Dooley and all the reporters. They said, Hershey decided he's coming to Georgia, he's coming to Georgia. Well, all of a sudden, they showed up at my home that night. I was too embarrassed to tell them I was joking about this, that I signed to go to the University of Georgia, and I really didn't want to go. Well, after I signed, Coach Dooley came to my father and myself, because, you know, Wrightsville is real little. I always tell everyone, if you got one year to live, you move there, because that year is forever. Same old, same old. <laughs> So Coach Dooley came up to my father, myself, and my front porch, and his words were, we're happy to have Herschel on the team, but I'm not sure if Herschel can play at the University of Georgia. That's what Coach Dooley said. I'm not sure if that was his motivation speech, but I remember thinking, dude, I don't like you either. Because, you know, all my life I heard people tell me I wasn't good enough to hang around with them. That's all I ever heard people telling me I wasn't good. I was all right then. So all of a sudden, I go to the University of Georgia, and I get there at, at, three, at about 3.30 3 in the morning. It's dark outside, no cars in the parking lot. And I remember I get there so early, and all of a sudden, we get ready to play against, no, against Tennessee, the first game, Knoxville, Tennessee. There was like 97,000 people at this game. Now, remember, I'm from right here, Georgia. The largest crowd I ever played in was, I think, 5,000 people. I think that was at my state championship game. Now I'm in front of 97,000 people will win Knoxville. There's only 4,000 people from Georgia, but they put them in the end zone so they couldn't be seen or heard. But let me tell you what, something my mom also has said. Man can't stop what God got in store for you. Because this is what was so funny. We're getting beat 15 to nothing. And Coach Dula tell you the reason I, he decided to let me play, that was like 4,000 people over 93,000 short of the chant. We want Herschel. That's what he told me. We want Herschel. He decided he was just going to throw me into the game. He threw me into this game. Now we end up winning this game. Now 16 to 15. Now I play the next week against Texas A&M. I have 180 something yards and three touchdowns in three quarters. Now I got to play the rest of the year. 
to play against Notre Dame, beat Notre Dame for the national championship. Can you believe that? I'm from Wrightsville, Georgia. Beat them for the national championship. Now they said, Herschel, as a freshman, you're nominated for the Heisman Trophy. Tell y'all another secret. At that time, I didn't know what the Heisman Trophy was. <laughs> Guys, I didn't grow up playing football. I learned football from reading books. I never played no football. I didn't even like football. I, the reason I started playing football, I used to cut wood. My father used to chop wood, and I worked in the country. And So my mom used to make me wash dishes and stuff, and I thought a bright idea to start playing football to get out of washing dishes, and that's a terrible idea because you still got to wash dishes. But that's the reason I started playing football. So I never knew what the Heisman was. So I went to the library to read about the Heisman Trophy. Well, in 1980, they didn't give it to me. They gave it to a guy by the name of George Rogers. Y'all probably saying the same thing I'm saying, like, who the heck is George Rogers? My junior year, same thing happened. I have another incredible year, and I get nominated as a sophomore for the Heisman Trophy. They didn't give it to me then either. They gave it to Marcus Allen. <laughs> USC, I'm better looking than he was, but anyway. My junior year, just to tell you how good God is, I was leaving the University of Georgia my junior year. Just think about this. I'm leaving because I mean, I've done everything my parents wanted me to do. It's time for me to go join the military. I was going to leave that Friday, go join the military. Something happened. I was running the ball, and I broke my thumb. And I remember the bone was sticking up through the skin of my finger, and I remember thinking, crap. Because, you know, that's the reason I didn't go join the military. I stayed there at the University of Georgia. We have another incredible year. Now they give me the Heisman Trophy. You got to hear what I just said. They gave me the Heisman Trophy. I'm not sure if I earned it. My junior year, and I tell them that. I said, guys, I feel like I'm the Susan Lucci at the Heisman Trophy. Y'all probably don't know the Susan Lucci here, but look it up. But I felt that I'm not sure if I earned it because my criteria for earning the Heisman Trophy, I get a chance to vote today. There's one aspect of it that I would have lost to John Elway. And that aspect was, you know, we, we do a lot for the community, so there I would have been okay. We got good grades, there I would have been okay. But what did you mean to your team? Well, John Elway meant more to Stanford than I meant to Georgia in 1982. So he would have won it over me. But they gave it to me. Now I get a chance to go play pro ball. Guys, listen to this. I played 15 years of pro ball. 15 years. The life expectancy of a running back in the NFL is only like three to four years. I played 15 years. Not only that, listen to this. I don't know if you know this. I was considered one of the fastest guys in the world. I'm from Wrightsville, Georgia. I weighed 220 pounds running against these little bit of guys in the world, and I used to beat them. And the reason I used to do that because don't let anyone tell you you can't do something if you're willing to work at it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because when they tell you you can't do it, the only reason they're telling you you can't do it because they can't do it. And they read in some book you're not supposed to do it. But let me tell you, they don't know who you are. They don't know where you come from. So I didn't know I wasn't supposed to run fast, never written in the Bible. So I went out and ran, and ran some of the fastest times in the world. Not only that, guys, this is what's so funny. In 1992, I don't know if you know this, but I was on the 1992 Olympic winter bobsled team in the Olympics. There's absolutely no snow in Georgia. <laughs> and I made the 1992 Olympic bobsled team. And that just tells you right there that you can do what you want to do if you're willing to get up when you get knocked down because you will get knocked down. You will get knocked down. I'm going to tell you right now, everything is, will not go your way, but it's okay to get up. It's okay to make a mistake because you can always turn around. Don't think you're going to be perfect because you're not because I never was perfect. But this was so funny. After I got out of football, they told me I had a problem. And I'm like, what do you mean I got a problem? They said I had a mental problem. I'm like, how in the world could I have a mental problem? I got good grades in school. I don't have no mental problem. They said, uh, you know, I got, uh, you know, I won a Heisman Trophy on an Olympic team. All those great things I was doing. You know, I never drank, guys. This was so funny. I never drank before in my life. Never tasted beer. Never had any alcohol. Never taken any drugs. I don't even take medicine. So I, I don't have no problem. But yet, there was something wrong because... I'm going to tell you something else, and I say this. Satan got your playbook. Y'all know what I mean? It's sort of like your opposing team know the plays you're running, so they've got to try to set up a defense for you. So what Satan was trying to do to me, he knew that I loved the Lord Jesus, so he was going to try to fool me, so he threw this mental health thing out there for me. 
And I thought I could fall for it because I said, wait a minute, I don't have no problem until I found out there was something wrong. So I decided, because my mom and dad told me when something is wrong, you got to correct it. So I decided to go to a hospital. People don't know this. I decided to go to a hospital, and I went to this hospital, and I go, whoa, these people here are crazy. That's what I, these people are crazy. I'm not like them. But my mom also told me, we all fall short of the glory of God. I found out after a couple of days of being there, I know I'm just like them. What happens is sometimes stuff happens in your life that you get ashamed of what's going on, so you try to hide it. Or you don't understand it. Or people don't want to address it. So I started addressing my problem. I got up again. I got up again and I started this little business. I started a chicken business. Now I went to Georgia in criminal justice. I wanted to be go to law school and eventually get into the FBI. That's what I wanted to do. But now I'm in the chicken business. I started a little chicken business and I'm out there working. I'm like working so hard and stuff. And this is what was so funny. I didn't need to work. And you know, I've, I've been doing good. God has done, been so good to me. I didn't need to work. I played football. I saved my money. But now I'm running this chicken business. And this is what was so funny is uh, for five days, almost five days a week, almost for five years, I was at a food show selling chicken like a street vendor. I'm at this show where I would set my booth up, I would fry the chicken, I would display the chicken, I'd take my booth down, and sometimes i get left in an airport overnight, I'd sleep overnight in an airport, and people were so rude. This is what was so funny, people were so rude, because they would come to me, they'd have me take pictures, because I wanted to have some trophy, they'd have me holding their babies and kissing their babies and stuff, and then they'd write their big order for me to buy some chickens from me, and all of a sudden they'd go home and they'd cancel their order. They canceled that order, so I didn't sell anything. So all day, I just wasted all my time. But I did it for five years. I got a chance. Someone gave me an opportunity. And now that little chicken company is one of the largest minority-owned chicken companies in the United States of America. Can you believe that? I'm from Wrightsville, Georgia, because I didn't quit. I didn't quit. I kept going at it. So it was one of the largest companies. Then all of a sudden, I started talking about this mental health thing. And one of the largest behavior health hospitals in the world, out of King of Pressure, Pennsylvania, came to me and said, Herschel, we're starting a patient support program. I said, patient support program? What is that? They said, you know what? You've been talking about mental health so much. We want you to join this program. And this program is a program that every three weeks, I will go to a base, a military base, somewhere in the world, not just for a Marine base. I went to all branches of the military somewhere in the world, not just in the United States, but in the world, where I would visit these bases, and I would get a chance to like do some PT with our servicemen and women. Then I'd do some combative with our servicemen and women. But then i talk to them that there's no shame to ask for help. That there's no shame to ask for help. If you're struggling with anything, don't just don't ask for help, because we'll, we'll all fall down, but we get up. And so you can get help if you need the help, if you're willing to step out there that people can help you. And I started treating soldiers and stuff, and all this stuff started going well in my life. And I'm from Wrightsville, Georgia. And the reason I tell you that is as a men and women here, life is tough. Life is tough. Don't think it's a bed of roses. But you know what's so great about it? Because our great God, he give us an opportunity to be the best you want to be. But it can only happen in this great country we have today because of our United States military. So I thank you guys, and I say to you this here, I'm going to say this here, it may be hard, because I tell my son this. I have a son, Christian. I say, Christian, whatever you want, don't think you're special. Whatever you want, a thousand other people want it, so you know what? You got to work to go get it. You're going to have to make some tough decisions because it is hard out there. But you know what's so great about it? When you're working to get it, you appreciate it. Because everyone want to get to de get to the destination, but they don't want to travel the journey. That's a little bit too hard. Everyone want to get to the finish line, but they don't want to do the race. Hey, you got to finish, guys. You got to do the whole race. That's when you enjoy it better. Hey, I've been doing it all the time. I still work out. I work out today because I said, well, some guy in Tupelo, Mississippi, like Bo Jackson, going to show up one day and want to challenge me, and I got to be ready. Because hey, I don't like to lose. I'm like Ricky Bobby. And I tell people this, guys. Every day you got to be prepared. Prepare yourself for the classroom. You got to sacrifice. 
What I mean by sacrifice, you got to put that cell phone down. What I mean by sacrifice, I'm, I hate to tell you, at this age here, you don't need a girlfriend, you don't need a boyfriend. You don't, you don't need that right now. What I mean by sacrificing, oh, you know what? You can't just be going out. You got to stay there and do your homework. Man, that's kind of hard to stay there and do your homework. What I mean by sacrifice, you don't want to be drinking. You don't want to be doing that stuff. Oh. And people say, I was weird because I didn't do it. Well, I'm glad I was weird because today I can see where I'm at today. In life, you always got a decision. You always got a decision. Let me tell you, and that decision can determine where you're going to head at in your life. Just remember that. You got to wear it. And I want to just leave you with this, and maybe I'll take a couple of questions. I always heard a story about these two gentlemen that loved baseball. They loved baseball so much that as they was getting up in their age and getting older, one of them was on his deathbed, getting ready to go leave and meet his maker. And the other one came in and looked down at Harold, who's laying there about to leave this world. And he said, Harold, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? And Harold said, what can I do for you? He said, I'm about to leave this world right now. He said, can you let me know if that's baseball in heaven? Harold thought that was a strange request. He said, if I can do that, I will. If I can do it, I will. And Harold passes away. A couple of weeks later, the other guy's working in his backyard on a bright sunny day like today. And this cloud started coming towards him, and he knew it had to be Harold. So he ran up to this cloud, and he said, uh, is there a baseball in heaven? Is there a baseball in heaven? And the voice from this cloud said, well, I got some good and bad news. He said, I don't care about that. Is there a baseball in heaven? He said, the good news, there is baseball in heaven. The guy go, yes. He said, the bad news is you're pitching tomorrow. I'm going to tell you that. We never know whatever's going to happen in our lives. Get it in today. Finish that race today. Finish that last push-up. Finish that last sprint. Finish that last thing today. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, that's when we'll handle that. But get it all done today. I want to thank you guys again for giving me an opportunity to speak and tell you, God bless you, and thank you guys so much. God bless you now. Thank you.